What else? Great, so now it's time to get hands on again. Hands on? No. Hands on? Yes, let's get hands on again to build your robotics portfolio for better job opportunities. Ah, okay. okay, yes. So uh, let me see what is the situation. Yes, in today's competitive robotics field, showcasing your skills effectively is a key skill that you have to master in order to land it, your dream job. This workshop will guide you step by step on how to show your robot project and achievements to stand up to employers. Let's welcome Miguel Angel Rodriguez, the head of research of the construct, where he's going to show us how we can craft a strong portfolio that boosts your career prospects in robotics. Miguel, how are you doing? Hi, Ricardo. Nice Hi. to be here. Okay, excellent. Are you ready? Let's have I'm a look. Ready. Yes, we can see you now. Excellent. So then the audience is all yours. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so thanks, Ricardo. As Ricardo mentioned, I'm the the head of research in the contract. And I'm going to try to give you some insight and some tips on, on how to develop your uh, robotics portfolio, which I think it's one of the most important parts uh, when you're starting to look for jobs uh, uh, in companies and research, whatever you need. So I think it's vital nowadays. So I hope everybody can see my my screen now, what I'm sharing there. Yes, uh, yes we can see it. it. Okay. Okay, so let me start. So the first thing is, uh, what is a developer's, a robotics developer's portfolio? So it's essentially your space to showcase your robotics work and get hired for it. The main purpose of the portfolio is to show the others what you have accomplished in robotics so that they can evaluate your work and decide if, you, if they want to hire you or not. It should be, for one, a page ready to be sent to any job offering, opening or whatever. So it's something that it has to be easy to share. It should help the recruiter quickly decide if you fit for the job or not. Uh, and also trigger some questions for the, for the interviewer, which it's easier and it, it will be the main topic of all this workshop and what I'll be talking about, which is lowering friction for the recruiter. The lower the friction, the better and higher possibilities you have to get hired. And also, it should show professionalism. So no doodling, no web pages of Windows 95. So something that shows the level that uh, anybody hopes for an engineer in 2024. Okay. So the first thing is, okay, Mike, but uh, I mean, I have my curriculum. Why do I need this uh, portfolio you said well there are several reasons but you can here see the most important ones first everybody lies in their curriculum and that doesn't mean that you put very big lies but normally we tend to um, decorate the things a bit better and we have we try to sell us better than it, what it really is sometimes we don't have the concept of those skills if they are so valuable or not that's one thing then actual experience matters in engineering jobs actually experience matters above practically anything so you can have uh, an education that it's not that high level but maybe you have a lot of experience and and normally engineering jobs prefer that. So having a lot of experience in whatever you, you're applying to, then it shows your professionalism to the recruiter. So it shows that you care, that you care about your image, your professional image, and to show the work that you've done. And then finally, 
it simplifies the life of the recruiter, as I said earlier. Um, the portfolio shows what you're capable of and essentially help the, the, the recruiter, the job that it has to do, basically that. So what should include the portfolio? The first thing is common sense. So it has to have the information, personal information, so that the recruiters can contact you. Normally, when you're sending your portfolio, you, the recruiter at least has your email or something like that. Uh, so at least some way, but you have to open the ways, the channels where the recruiters can contact you like Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, whatever. If they can't contact you, they can't tell you you're, you're the so awesome person and engineer you are. So that's the first thing you have to add. Then the second, and it's one of the most important parts, is a collection of robotics projects. So show a selection of your best projects. More doesn't mean better. So the best ones. Those projects must represent your skills, abilities, and the quality of your work. So those projects, they might be not very practical or some, but it have, they have to be a demonstration of what you're capable of, your maximum potential. Then the third thing that it should include is contribution to open source projects. And that's something that, uh, from, from my perspective, I thought, why do I have to contribute at the start? And you, throughout the years, you discover that uh, when you work in a company, most of the code that you do is not public, which means no one will ever know the fantastic code that you wrote two years ago. So that's one of the reasons why contributing to open source projects is very important. And also contributing to open source projects um, requires a set of skills that potential employees always look for, like knowing how to work in a team, knowing how to manage a project, everything. All those skills are concentrated on the fact that you contributed to open source projects. Then you need a summary of experience, which is basically your working experience, if I work there, and, and so on. The most important part of here is that you don't have to put all your work experience, only the work experience that is relevant for the job post that you're um, applying to. So if it's relevant only one thing, then put one. And the reason is, again, lowering friction for the recruiter. The recruiter doesn't care if you uh, worked in a pizza restaurant uh, five years ago, unless you're applying for a pizza job, okay? So be simple and put only the information that is relevant. Then summary of education, again, only the things that are relevant. So skills, I know how to play the guitar, but it, it's not relevant for my job now. So only put the skills that are relevant and languages, of course. And finally, the uh, list of certificates. So just show the latest education you got relevant to the job. Again, not all the certificates of your life, only the ones that are relevant for the job post. Okay. So how how can we create one? The first step is obviously, and the most important part is, oh, by the way, I forgot something. So from these six points, the, the ones that are compulsory that you have to put are the first three. So contact information, the collection of the best projects and contributions to open source. The four, five, and six experience education list of certificates it's a good to have, it's not a requirement in portfolios. Okay, so how can we create one? The, 
the first thing that you have to do is select the most important projects. And those projects must represent your skills, abilities, and the quality of your work. If you just have one, then put a single one and not more than six. And the reason is again, reduce friction. If you put 20 projects, the recruiter won't know where to start and it won't concentrate his, his attention in, in the fantastic job that you've done. So it's much better that you just put a single one, the one that is most relevant for the job that you're applying to or you're looking for, or just the topic that you're most interested about. Then second step is you have to create a good thumbnail and pick a title for each one. And as an engineer, I understand that this for us is a bit difficult at the start. So why do I have to spend hours picking a thumbnail and a title? It, it's, it, I'm not spending my time where I should and you'd be wrong. Even if the recruiter is a very well-versed engineer, presenting your projects in a graphical way that anyone from your, from your wife, your friends, or anyone that doesn't know anything about it understands is key, even for engineers that know a lot of stuff, okay? So it's absolutely essential. So please get your YouTuber spirit and generate good thumbnails. Then the third step is you have to create good documentation. And I can't stress this enough, enough. Um, documentation must clearly indicate the following. First one is what is about, what, what's this project about? This project that you stated here, which it might be only a single one, okay? So what is about? Then the next one is which problem is it solving? which results are expected. And third, how to launch the code to obtain the claimed results. And I can't stress this enough. There's loads of projects around, hundreds, thousands of GIDs and projects everywhere in the internet, and no one uses them. And they can be fantastic, fantastic coding, fantastic. But if the person that opens the project doesn't understand, how to use it, it's absolutely useless unless you generated the tool that is it's the single one in the world and they need to use it. Then they have to look into your code and have a look. But for a potential recruiter, he has to go fast. And that means making it very easy and lowering the friction at the maximum. Then the fourth step is provide source code and a way to replicate results. So this is, if, if possible, include a video, the system working, you can upload the, it to YouTube and put the links in the instructions. But essentially provide a way to the recruiter to test and feel the project that you've done. That has a lot of power to selling your projects. It's, you can't imagine how much power this. And you've seen it throughout the day that the presentations that, that give real results and show you things in the real robots even, they have very big impact on your, on your memory and understanding of what you're doing. And then finally, add all the other personal details like experience and all that stuff. As I said, these, this, this final step is optional. It's a good to have in the portfolio, but not necessary. So where should you host it? There are mainly, I would say, let's, I'm going to talk about three ways of doing this. The first one is Git. And this is, this is no brainer because Actually, if you're an, a good engineer, you'll be working in, in a Git of a, like, let's say GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab or whatever. So this comes automatically. The, the good things is that 
you'll have it for when you work. The disadvantage of this is that the recruiter will have to download the code to test it. And that's complicated because each one has different computers. Your code might um, break the recruiter system, which that would generate a very bad impression. So it's a good place to start. And the I would say the easiest one. Then the next one is generating your own personal page, self-hosting it. And the advantages of this is that you have full control on what you include, what you don't include. And the disadvantages is that you need more experience, more time and spend time or, or money on generating this, this personal page. Um, and as a side note, make it mobile friendly because most of the recruiters will see your your portfolio maybe in their mobile phones so um, i've seen a lot of portfolios that look very nice and web page and desktop and when you see it in the mobile phone they are total rubbish and you don't understand anything so take care on that then another option is one that we give here in the construct which is uh, it has all the features that I've, I've talked about previously, but also it allows one of the best ones is that it allows the execution of the projects online by the, by the recruiter. And just by pressing the button, you don't need to download, you don't need to install anything, and they can use any computer to check the project. And that's a massive selling point because it's again reducing the friction to the recruiter that's one thing and also another thing is that you can put their code make it work and then forget about it because i i'm sure all the engineers that are, are hearing this what how many projects you've done you've left them in the git and when you time goes by and then you return you try to download it execute it and it doesn't work so one advantage of hosting them in the construct is that they will work forever and that is a bonus for sure because when you have to make your portfolio fast because you want to um, select certain projects for a certain position yeah, they have to work and you you can't spend days and days and days making them work code of two years and also this integrates with Ross job listings page and as a side note uh, we don't recommend for example LinkedIn because LinkedIn is more focused on uh, resumes uh, curriculums and the hosting of projects is a bit uh, dodgy so uh, we don't recommend that one so again the construct you have a very good option there so I can show you mine, for example. Let me click here. There we go. So again, you can see here that I have the personal information. I have the six most important of important projects that I'm more fond of, like for example, AutoWare. We did a test about this. We also do, did ROS2 with uh, Godot. Uh, Tic-tac-toe, um, uh, quadruped, the uh, rover here, also my, our projects in fleet management, and I have them here. I just click here, run, and it's good to go. And then we have also all the experience and my certificates and so on. And also you can print your curriculum and it just prints and you have the curriculum just for the labs, I suppose. Okay, let me return to the, there you go. And again, I wanted to also give an example of one of our master's class students, Miguel Solis uh, portfolio, which is amazing. And he's hosting it in a web page. And this is amazing because he showcases all the projects that he's done throughout the master class, most of them. And as a recruiter, I would say, okay, 
which one do I pick? And you can see here, he's using images, videos to sell. And it's very descriptive of what he's doing, designing the kinematic model of Frostbot XL and doing the 3D kinematic analysis and control. It's very clear for me. And I haven't, I, I, I don't know this guy and I don't know what he, his skills are, but I'm seeing that he's serious and professional. And I know more or less with a glance what he's capable of. So as final conclusions, um, what if you don't have projects done yet? Then start right now creating one. And this is fundamental. If you want to get a job in engineering and robotics, whatever you want, you have to have working experience. So select a topic that you like, that you love, and start a Git. Create a Git and start your project. That's one thing that you can do. Another one that could be complementary is contributing to an existing open source project by solving bugs, by adding features, by suggesting improvements. And the best way would be to combine both of these things. So you create your own project about, I don't know, I love a humanoid robot and I want, and want a humanoid robot that dances. I don't know. Then I look for open source projects that I need for my project and I fix bugs. And then I go there and do pull requests. And doing this, you generate a project that you love that you can put in your portfolio to showcase your quality, your skills, programming skills, robotic skills, whatever. And you're doing something that you love and you can show with passion. And I can assure you that if you have a portfolio with a project that you are passionate about, it will be very well done, very well documented. And someone that shows passion about a project, uh, it's a plus when it's in a recruiting selection um, race. And uh, that's it. I finished like nine minutes before, but I think. Excellent, Miguel Angel. <laughs> We have reached the questions stage now. So thank you for your presentation, Miguel, and for clarifying some points about how to get a good portfolio. Okay. And now it's time for the questions from the audience. And you know that there is a Q&A tab that is on the chat on the site. Then you can put your questions for Miguel there or both the ones that are already written. And then I will ask those questions to Miguel directly. Mm -hmm. Also, a round of applause. Yes, I, I like this applause thing on the on the thing on the on the <laughs> platform. There, it's cool. Great. Then one question from Juan Rodriguez. He says, "How many pages should a CV have?" Okay, very good question. One, uh, one, one. Yeah. Uh, as again, as I said. Uh, curriculum or portfolio, but they have to be concise and to the point. And if you have like three pages, uh, the recruiter will get bored. They have to see hundreds of applications. You can't, you have to concentrate your information that you give. So I would say one, one, that's it. Okay. And another question from Shivam Chudasa. Chudasama that says, if you are a fresher with a relevant internship experience, what shall we do to boost our chances? Okay. Um, there's no, first of all, there's no irrelevant internship uh, experience. I think that anything that you do ha is relevant. It is relevant. So that's one thing. And second is, as I said, Pick a project that you're passionate about, okay? And you can do it in your free time. You can look for open source projects about this topic and start working. No, no courses, no nothing, okay? Uh, I would recommend that you do courses when you need them. So you're, I'm doing my project, my passionate project, and I need to know about um, inverse kinematics. 
and I do a course. So, but do a project that you're passionate about and do it public. And that forces you to be better engineer. And you'll, you'll see that in very little time, people will be interested in your project. That's mm -hmm. my advice. Yes, and also let me share also the comments that Jack, Professor Jack Silverman shared with us about this thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any internship experience or whatever, mm -hmm. go and do an internship. Go and do an, that's what he was saying then, go and do an internship in a relevant field. Mm -hmm. And you, for that, maybe you have to do this for free. Yes. So you go there and then you provide value to the person that is providing you this internship. It has to be a valuable internship for you. I mean, in, your, in the line of your career. But if that's the opportunity there, then you should go and, and, and do it. In this case, it, like this, you are going to build your portfolio. You are going to have your internship experience. And then you can boost your chances, as, as he says. Mm -hmm. That Actually, was uh, expressed by uh, Professor Jack Silverman before, some talks before. Let me ask you another question. Sure. Then uh, it's for uh, Ruji Osama that he says, I am a robotics student at the fourth year. Mm -hmm. Should I work on a portfolio? Maybe yeah. oriented to internships, he says. Oriented for Internships, maybe? Internships. Should I start working right on the portfolio? Uh, yeah, so you would, you have to start with a project and then you generate a portfolio. But I mean, you're in fourth year and I suppose you are finishing in one, two years. Um, so start working in your passion project. Uh, I, for example, I started in robotics when I was, yeah, around there. And I went to the ED there and I did a project on human walking robots. And I didn't post the code and I did wrong. So do the work and post it publicly and put it nice with good documentation, videos and so on. And that can grant you an internship in somewhere because they'll say, okay, this person has experience in this and this topics. So it's better than doing the, your studies without doing anything and then you're imagining that when you finish, someone will recruit you. If you don't have prior experience, it's more difficult to get an internship sometimes. So, or a yeah. job. Yes, uh, actually that's what also the Luca and Sai were saying at the beginning of the mm -hmm. conference that about the importance of having a portfolio of things done. That you have done yes mm -hmm. then yeah. i have another question from uh, rodrigo that says that, do you recommend to showcase many many projects or just a very few strong ones uh, i recommend one maybe two or three but they have to be not like 20 or so uh, i think they have to be relevant to what your interests are of applications or work because if you're applying to, for example, PAL Robotics, maybe the projects on control, projects on biped robots are relevant. And maybe AI related projects maybe are not that relevant for the job post that you're applying to. So I would say very few, from one to three, maximum six. So that would be the strong ones, right? Yes, exactly. The strong ones. And then and Andres Leonardo is asking, should I add papers or prices to my portfolio? Mm, good question. So, again, if they're relevant for the application, for sure, for sure. Uh, papers are a bit, uh, prices, I would say, okay, yeah. Uh, it's like uh, education, it's uh, good to have. Papers a bit higher, especially if you're applying for research that has higher value. But again, papers have this drawback that there's no demo or code that shows anything. And sometimes reading a paper, it's a bit complex, uh, difficult for the recruiter. So I would say if you put papers, um, put a link 
to your documentation with demos and videos. I think that would sell the paper much better. And that's, okay. that's my opinion in there. Okay. And then very simple question, maybe you can show to our winder that says, how do you host your portfolio on the ground story? I think it was not quite clear. Yeah. Maybe you can yeah, share yeah. your screen. Let me share a screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. So you can see here that that in in the main page you just go to your profile that's it that's simple uh, yes and that's then, and then press the the pencil right yeah you well, press edit. the pencil here and you edit all the elements that you want to edit like here and then these guys here the projects what you have to do is you have to go to your your pro your projects and then uh, click on a project for example this guy and then you see this one i have it there hosted mm -hmm. and maybe let's i don't know let's remove this one so when it's not added you just go to this three dots here and then add project to showcase that's it and then it should be in your profile so it's really, really easy. It's, it can't be more easy than this. Yes. Okay, then uh, thank you very much, Miguel. I think that we are going to stop here and thank our speaker again. Thank you. Thank you. Some applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Miguel. And you know what happens after the speakers, guys. Make sure you go on the box for rating and rate Miguel here as the speaker because we got one more speaker and uh, afterwards we're going to select the best one of this year. All right, so here I am again. I know that you know that uh, we're gonna have some fun. Okay. Do, you, do you promise is the last one, Chess? Yeah, I promise, I promise. So let's right. do the last prize quiz of the day. Um, the winner is going to win our last super swag box with uh, I'm the robotics developer t-shirt, the coffee mug and the stickers. Um, so uh, you're going to watch the last five minute video about uh, Usarian as the sponsor. And at the end of the video, you're going to see the question related to, to the project. And uh, the first person who answered correctly, you, you will get the sweat box. So as always, you may need to visit the page of the sponsor to get to the answer. So now let's watch the video and uh, the last speaker will be back in five minutes. See you soon. See you soon.